And we're live, guys. Good morning. It's Thursday, at least I think it is. Last I checked. Oh, good. It's Thursday. So uh, we're here for Teen Thursday. Um, the 12th? Isn't it the 12th? No, that's, you're getting way too detailed for me. I wasn't even 100% sure it was Thursday five seconds ago. It's the 12th. So, April 12th. Uh, yay, happy April 12th. Um, I don't know if that's like a holiday or not, but it yeah. is now. It's Teen Thursday, which is the best Yesterday holiday. Yesterday was 411. I hope that everybody got lots of good information yesterday. <laughs> so we have a lot of books, which is great because the last few weeks we've been talking about how we didn't really have a lot of books. Uh, and I know there was one week where we had two new releases total, so we didn't even do a live stream. We just posted about the two new books. That's so funny. yeah, so I'm really excited that we actually have um, a good collection of books, and it's mixed. It it's not just fantasy. It's not just uh, contemporary, which I know we were talking it's about. Nice we've been talking about that too, like on all the live streams. How it's been like, uh, we've just got a lot of fantasy. I'm, I don't know what, or we just got a lot of contemporary for a while. We, I think I had the entire month of March was just contemporary books. There was like there are a lot of returning authors this week too, like Veronica Roth and. Um, Rachel Cohen, David Leviathan, and um, Margaret Pearson Haddock. Yeah. So it's not all debuts, it's some new stuff. From it's going to be, it's a good week. Favored authors. I'm very excited about this. This looks really cute. Yes, somebody already commented uh, about Emma Burkett. So, yes, let me just start there. Um, we've got Devils Unto Dust out this week, and she'll be here um, this weekend, I believe. Um, let me get the exact information. Yes, she'll be here on April 14th, which is Saturday, at 6 p.m. And what I love about this book is that it's actually called uh, True Grit Meets 28 Days Later. So it hmm. speaks to me in so many ways. So is it fantasy? It's, it's fantasy. It's zombies. Oh, nice. Um, and it's actually like one, one person called it like True Grit Meets Walking Dead. Uh, or 28 started. Days Later, and the other person called it Westworld Meets Walking Dead. So basically, like, it's a Western Everything. zombie yeah. greatness. Um, and it does take place in Texas. It's out in West Texas, which yeah. is quite possibly the best and worst place to be in the zombie apocalypse. Not a lot of people out there, so... I heard the other day that um, Zombieland is canon that Zombieland takes place in Garland. It does. It's it's um uh he talks about um at the very beginning he's here in Austin. Uh -huh. Um and then he's from and so he's trying to get back up north and so he actually stops like that's where allegedly like he stops on the yeah, highway. I didn't know so, that. Yeah, it's really great that it's like a big Texas. I guess I thought it took place somewhere in the Midwest, but Texas that's where he's trying to get He's Definitely. trying to get back to the Midwest. But Texas is a great especially like if you look like it's like the, the big bin kind of thing. Like at first, it's like, oh, it's just a desert, but then you realize that that's blood, and it's kind of creepy. Yes. So, 10 years ago, in this book, uh, 10 years ago, a horrifying disease began spreading across West Texas. Um, it infected people, giving them what were called the shakes, um, and they attacked the living and created havoc and destruction, and no one has ever survived the infection until, of course, our main character, who's been protecting their siblings um, in Glory, Texas. And their father steals a fortune from one of the most dangerous shake hunters in town. She's in debt. She has to stop him. So, like I said, it's like the Wild West meets uh, a zombie apocalypse. And it's great for fans of anything from Magnificent Seven to Walk on Earth or A Stranger or Westworld or Walking Dead. Like, there is, this is one of those, you are going to love this book if you're watching TV at, at all. It looks like a really unique take on zombies, which is hard to find. It is, and so all of the zombie yeah. fans out there, this is great. What you can actually do is you can come get this now, read it, come see her on Saturday, and then I believe like this weekend is also the Zed Town thing, so then you can go fight zombies like in the city. Um, I don't know all the details on that, but it could be at the same time, and if that's the case, don't do it. Come here and listen to Emma talk, but... Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a really cool event. And anytime somebody talks about zombies, they're automatically like, all like, right with me. Like I'm a zombie zombie fan for life. So if you're you're into zombies, we're buddies, and we should just. It was be in my now. marriage vows. Was it really? Yeah. Come alien invasion or zombie apocalypse. That's fantastic. That is a <laughs> way a way better like than in sickness and in health like kind of thing. So. Uh, 
And to continue on, because like I said, there are a lot of books this week, and I'm going to be going back and forth between what's out and the comments. So please leave comments on the Facebook. I will check them. I will comment back to you. Uh, unfortunately, the program I'm using on my computer for the video doesn't actually show me your comments, so I have to keep going back and forth to check. But still leave them, still ask questions. We're, that's what we're here for. Um, which, by the way, I didn't even introduce myself. I just got really excited about the zombie book. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm Shannon. I'm the YA specialist here at Book People. So um, I'm the one. I run the Teen Press Corps. I'm at the Teen Book Festival. Anywhere there's teen lit going on, I'm probably there. And I'm Lola. I'm a bookseller, and uh, I, I like kids and YA a lot. And I also study. Um, children's lit and yeah. comics, so um, that's sure, where kind of the two best things, and you don't really yeah. need to like read anything. I have the best life. <laughs> Although, side note, it's reading across walls, and my challenge every year for Mohinia is to read a book for adults, and so I just won um, Box, which is a book about a girl. Um, it's kind of like a just very not too far into the future, but a little bit into the future. A uh, dystopian world where women are only allotted 100 words a day, and they actually have a counter on them, and every word they use ticks off a word on their counter, and then if they go past that, they get in trouble. And I'm like 20 pages in, and I'm already like recommending this book to everybody, so I really hope the ending goes. Only like, 100? I'd be so oh, We'd already be dead. Like, and so, <laughs> like, this is, it takes me more than 100 you words. You die like, instantly? No, you don't die. Oh, you just they get just in, come, they after, come you. after you for something. Like, you get punished. But... I don't know what yet. And so anyway, she's going to start a revolution because she has a daughter and her poor little daughter like doesn't get to like even talk about school. She can't play with her brothers. Like she can't do anything because she just gets to nod or shake her head. Like she's only allowed to answer yes or no questions because it doesn't take words. And so I'm already super into this book and I already like I told like three people about it and they all want to borrow it already. So I'm really glad I won this you book. Can add me to the list. Yeah, like I entered a contest and I won, and which feels really like not fair because I already like work at a bookstore. But I entered a contest and I won, and I'm super excited because this book an is adult amazing. Book, so it's an adult book. Party. Nobody has ever given me given me an adult book before. Um, so it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna let Lola take this one because oh, I know I'm she's really, really excited. excited about it. I might have to buy this copy today. So this is a sequel to Veronica Ross, who wrote the Divergent series. And this is a sequel to her second series. The first one is Carve the Mark, which I loved. I thought it was super good. Um, and so I'm very excited because the last one, of course, ended on like a cliffhanger. And I also had all these like adult. The end of the last book, I had all these fan theories <laughs> based on. Um, so it's like it's like. Star Wars a little bit. Like if you like Star Wars, you'd be into this. It's like Star Wars meets <laughs> something. It's not I'm not I'm not describing it very well. But it's set in space and it's like a really cool universe the way she's set it up that it has these like actually you can kind of see like these are supposed to be the streams of um it's like kind of mystical. Oh, I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> anyway, all the main characters have these fates that everyone knows. And it's like the second child of the family, Novak or whatever, will. this is what will happen to them. And those fates are supposed to stay secret, but at the beginning of the first book, they're released all over their universe. Um, and it sets all these events into motion. But I don't think that... Some of the characters who think their fate is their fate, I don't think that's their fate. Like, I think that they might actually be from a different family. I won't say any spoilers. but So I'm really excited to see what happens next and see if, if I have the right thinking, like if I predicted this. or I, I will admit that like her writing sometimes takes different turns than I thought it would. And I... I we were just talking about like the Divergent series. I really liked the first one. I liked the whole concept. The second one, the second and third ones, I wasn't as thrilled with. Like the first one, I just like flew through. Flew through it. Yeah. And um, but they, these are really good. I think she her writing has grown a lot. Grown. I so it looks like really 
It, they, the covers have been really intense for mm -hmm. those, and so I just imagine. I will like, warn people: it is grim dark. It is like the first one is very violent. Did you see this? Ooh. No, I didn't. So Dang if it. you undress the book, this is a new thing they're doing a lot now. I love when you undress the book. This one's kind of big in the corner. Um, but I love when you, it's got like, it's a assembly ship, and then it's got all this different oh, planets. Cool. And so it's, it's like a map. Yeah. And a code shows the sun. Oh. Like, over their galaxy. So that's a super cool, super, super cool cover. And I mean, that's, I, you know, always know like the company that makes the, like that publishes, the publishers always have faith in the book when they give them one really like, yeah. awesome like thing. So, yeah. I like them. I, I think it's a rap series. Yeah, things I'm excited about, speaking of returning authors that I'm really excited about. So I am a huge Nick and Nora fan. Um, the book was amazing. The movie is hilarious. Yeah, so uh, Kat Dennings, Michael Sarah, like you can't go wrong. I love Kat Dennings so much. Oh, she's so wonderful. I'm, I actually have friends who named their dog Darcy after her <sighs> character in Thor. Uh, um, she's the best part of she's Thor. She's the best part of Thor. I, I read how a story... Uh, out of this like five minute Marvel and it was Thor and I was trying to remember how to say Mjolnir and <laughs> Mew Mew. Yeah, and I that's what I was Mew Mew. Robert called called it like from the other room. He's like, just say Mew Mew. <laughs> just say Mew Mew. But they the writers of Nick and Nora are back with another amazing book. And so this is Sam and so every time I'm like, Oh, it's Isla but it's it's actually not spelled the same one. Like Isla name necessarily, so because like Isla, Ilsa, yeah, Ilsa. and so like I, every time I see I it, I'm like it's it. Isla, and then I'm like no, it's not because Isla is I S L A, so uh -huh. it's actually Ilsa. Ilsa. Um, Sam and Ilsa's last hurrah, really and cute. it's it's gonna be great. It's kind of having that same thing. It's sibling Sam and Isla, or see, I did it again. Ilsa have spent most of their high school years throwing parties for their friends, and now they've prepared for the final blow up just before graduation. The rules are simple. That each team gets to invite three guests, and the other twin doesn't know who's coming until the partyers show up at the door. When Sam and Ilsa, the sibling revelry, with Sam and Ilsa, the sibling revelry is always tempered with a large dose of sibling rivalry, and tonight is no exception. One night, one apartment, eight people. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, we all know the answer is plenty, but plenty also goes right as well in rather surprising ways. And so. Really excited to see how this is going to go because they have such a great, unique voice when they write together. Mm -hmm. That's just hilarious. And what I love about them is they're also quick reads. Yeah. So you yeah, can this is get short. yeah, it's super short. Is, you can get <laughs> you can get into it. You can have fun with it, and then um, you're just like, oh my god, please give me another movie um, by the end of it. So this is going to be a great like kickoff to summer kind of read, especially since it takes place in that time frame. So really excited about that. Um, I feel like we've been kind of going back and forth between uh, like fantasy and horror, or fantasy and horror, fantasy and contemporary. I guess the real world does have some horrors in it, but um, so we're I'm, only concerned with genre fiction. <laughs> only concerned, yeah. Uh, so um, I guess we can switch to uh, actually Winter Glass. Have you heard about this one? Mm -hmm. So Winter. It looks like it's about sisters. It seems like there's more books coming out about like. Sibling. Yeah. And the, the, I just read Fangirl, so. Um, this is actually being held as a great new one for fans of Kendara Blake and Marissa Meyer. Um, she is, it's it's a Sleeping Beauty tale. Oh. Um, well, Spindle Fire was a Sleeping Beauty tale. And so this is actually the um, a return to that world, and it concludes the dark and stunning fairy tale reinvention that began with Spindle Fire. So um, what happened was is Aurora was turned, torn from her dream world, um, and he fought to assassinate the fairy queen, only to confront temptation she never expected. So we've also got Isabel opening her heart to Prince William as they attempt to unite the kingdom, but when the appearance of an unbreakable glass slipper prompts Isabel to discover more about her lineage, her true identity begins to take shape, and her legacy becomes as clear as ice. And so these two sisters are going to have to face Something evil, even greater than that of the evil queen, hmm. which is the threat of losing each other forever. So my thought is that this is Sleeping Beauty and her sister might be the Ice Queen. 
Oh. I thought Snow White, or Cinderella because of the slipper, slipper but, but if her future ice. is clear as ice, I kind of wonder if maybe her sister is going to end up being the ice queen, huh. um, which is always an interesting story or to tell. Snow White? Or who knows? I don't. I, so, I I can never get enough retelling of fairy tales. Me either. Especially the ones like Aurora or Cinderella, where the girls like suck so bad in the original. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially. I'm like, all about returning agency to them in as many ways as possible. I'll read them all. Which sure. we just had had reflection come out, which is a retelling of Mulan with magic. Oh. Um, and stuff like Mulan has to go to the underworld. And so Ooh. I'm really curious about that. That one came out a couple weeks ago. So um, that one, to me, was one that I was really like, oh, my God, I have to have this book. Mm. Um, so where do you want to go next? I'm going to let you pick the next one. This looks really good. Um, it's set in San Francisco. It has an Asian-American boy main character. Um, and he discovers his family secrets. Like, he's about to go off to college, he's an artist, and there's some kind of like, it says they approach the one year anniversary of a tragedy, and I'm like, oh, what's the tragedy? (laughs) Um, I mean, like, already I'm like, what's the mystery? What what are your family secrets? What was the tragedy? What's going on? I know, it's like everything, like, this was one of the best blurbs for a book like, yeah. in a while because nothing was given away. It was like, there's a tragedy, there's a secret, there's a this. And, I'm and like, it's like, but does what his best they? friend really love his girlfriend? And yeah. then I'm like, or does he love this guy? I don't know. Is that where it's going? That would be cool. Um, with everything Danny cares about in danger of being stripped away, he must face the ghosts of the past in order to build a future that belongs to him. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, it locked me out of my account. Um, so it looks really good. So one of our Teen Fest Core members actually reviewed it, and I was going to try to pull up her review so you guys could hear some of the stuff that she had to say about it, but it blocked me out, so I can't see it. But um, a cool like meta thing I noticed is that um, so he discovers this box of family secrets that has all these letters, and some of the letters are embedded in the book. Oh, that's awesome. So you like get to like read along with him, which I think is very clever. Did you undress cool. it? Is there anything cool oh, on that no. cover? Ooh, the brick wall. Oh, it looks like brick. I like that because he's, he's an artist. And he's graffiti like yeah. spray painting the, the front wall. And I like that this is this is the embossed cover, like yeah. it's raised. I love that that has that texture to it. Um, anytime they do like that extra little detail, it gets me every time. I'm like, well, I need that well, book now. Well, it makes it worth buying the hardcover. Right. For me. It does, because it gives you that extra little bit that you're like, okay, this is what like I needed to see in this book like already. Mm-hmm. So, um, other okay, next book on the list. I'm trying to decide where we should go. So now we have to go back to a fantasy because we've been switching back and forth. So we got Isle of Blood and Stone. So, Isle of Blood and Stone. Oh, this was the riddle one. Yes. So, I got really excited because it said the word riddle. The D&D in it. player in me is like, ooh, a riddle. Yes. You win. So, this one says, 18 years ago, two princesses van- or two princes vanished. Not about princes. girls. My bad. <laughs> two princes vanished. Now, a riddle hidden on a mysterious map could chart a course towards the truth and the missing royals and the historical fantasy that's perfect for fans of Rachel Hartman and Tamara Pierce. Uh, well, uh, everybody's a fan of Tamara Pierce, so yeah. um, there you go. But I love that it it's a high, it's a historical high fantasy with male leads because we don't see that a lot in YA yeah. anymore. And I love that like we have that that like it's like the youngest There's print. It's science, going out so to find them. Page divider, science fiction. I was going to say this doesn't look like science fiction. No, you're good. I love that this, like, there's the one brother who still left, and so he kind of, like, got the um, throne, like, he's by default, and now, like, the three, like, him and his friends, like, just have to figure out, like, the mystery, and they have to go together, and I love and solve this thing, and there's riddles, and there's... There is still a girl character, Mercedes. Um... Half Mon yes. Dragon. Half Mon Dragon. Mm-hmm. And she was she grew up in the shadow of Del Mar's hate. So I like that. I mean, I like that they're actually like both characters. I just think it's great that like we have a high historical fantasy that's got you know, it's about princes. Like it's always a missing princess. Mm-hmm. And for once we have a missing we have Prince. two missing princes. Yeah. 
And that's so fantastic. And the prince that has to, like, who randomly inherited the throne. So it's great to see a chance for, like, these, the teen guy, like, princes to get, get some some love out for a little bit. And so... Sweeping fantasy full of intrigue and scheme, romance and friendship, and fearless explorers. I love explorer adventure. Yeah, this sounds so, really exciting. Do we have anything cool on the cover? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. This it one. looks like a good summer read. No, nothing fancy, but still beautiful in color. Um, yeah, this is definitely going to be a good one. That, And I don't know if it's a start of a series or if it's just a standalone. Um, but I'm sure you'll know when you get to the end and there's a horrifying cliffhanger or something. Um, <laughs> but I love that the, the author of this, uh, Makaya Lucier, she has actually spent her entire life being obsessed with Indiana Jones. So Ooh. I feel like what's going to happen in this book is going to be a really amazing adventure because only an Indiana Jones fan could create an epic historical adventure that makes, like, wraps in fantasy. Mm -hmm. Just, like, I've already made it canon that Harrison Ford is in that book somewhere. So I just saw an article that came out today about, um, can we have a female Indiana Jones? Yes, please. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I am here for that. I would love to be I would love to be female Indiana Jones. So just let me know, Hollywood, <laughs> anybody, like if you need a female Indiana Jones, like Shannon's here. For I'm that. here for you. Just give me a call. I love history. I love adventure. Um, I think that's why I, I like look Timeless really good in so hats. much. I feel like the main character of Timeless is kind of like a female Indiana Jones. Yeah, she's a historian. And I actually, like, that was my favorite thing about the Mummy movies with Brendan mm -hmm. Fraser was yes, that the, yes, the Evie character. So I, was just, awesome. I mean, I'm still really bitter that they changed the actresses, whatever, it's fine. Um, but Evie in the first two movies yes. was, like, my hero. And she was a mom. I liked that. Yeah, she, exactly. Like, in the second one, she was just, like, a like, mom. And no, she, I mean, she might have, for, like, forgot what her kid was from time to time. But He might have almost died. He but. might have been the cause of the Scorpion King <laughs> returning, but whatever. Like it's fine, but I love, I loved that concept of like this librarian who like was tired of just reading about the venture adventures and wanted to like have her own, and she did have that. Like she grew into it like over time. Like I love that they didn't make her just automatically really good at like mm -hmm. fighting the bad guys or yeah. like she could she had to think through solving the problems. And those movies get a lot of crap, but like those oh, are I love great them. things. Like I love those them. are excellent yeah. like character development. Like for those movies, and I do too. I yeah. Like, how did Indiana Jones get so awesome to start with? Like, right. We never, like, we never get to journey. see that, and so I like that we saw her journey. It's because never mind. Because it's a dude. It's fine. You can say it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Abby <laughs> might take our video down later, but it's fine. You can say it. I, I'm a little yeah. I'm a little of to that at the moment after finishing my piece of research is about misogyny and <laughs> and so you know it happens. Dudes co-opting women being hurt. So our next book, which I, know. I don't know if that's about any of that or if this was a horrible segue, um, is The Summer of Broken Things by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Um, the cover is beautiful. It really is. It looks three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah. I like, mean, it looks like real realistic. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, like, it's, it's a contemporary, but they actually call it, like, they start it. with, it's a haunting novel about friendship and what it really it's means to be pretty, a family like, in the face of lies and betrayal. Ooh, that's yeah. it. Like looks gold. like it looks like a classic book. Like, yeah, it you know, does. You find like the old books in the yeah. store. It looks like that. Um, this has a uh, fourteen-year-old Avery is athletic, rich, and pretty. Sixteen-year-old Kayla is known as Butt Girl at school. The two girls were friends as little kids, but that's ancient history. So it's a huge surprise when Avery's father offers to bring Kayla along on a summer trip to Spain. Avery's horrified that her father thinks he can choose her friends and make her miss soccer camp. Kayla struggles to just imagine leaving the confines of her small town. But in Spain, the two uncover a secret their families had hidden from both of them their entire lives. Maybe the girls can put aside their differences and work through it together, or maybe the lies and betrayal will push them and their families further apart. So this is going to be hmm. awesome. I hope they end up being related. Like, I kind yeah, of hope they, I think they're probably going to end up being sisters, and I hope that they are. Or something. Maybe they're like... Explores what it really means to be a family and what to do when it's all gone. Yeah, and like lies and betrayal, and like it's, I mean, it's called a haunting. It sounds of a little, so. um, what's the one about pants? Sisterhood of the Traveling, traveling Pants. pants. Mm -hmm. 
like a darker European version of that. adventures and families and yeah. It's, and is, is it dual narrative? Yes. Okay, because it does say that she like weaves the voices together. So I, I really like that. Um, books coming up soon that are excellent use of dual narrative. It's put in is coming out soon. And of course, Julie Murphy is perfection. Um, but she does such a great job. And it's kind of the same thing where there's like the super popular girl and the girl that everybody makes fun of and it, like alternates those voices. And you see like who's the like, who you know, like, you see like one coming to terms with the others like thought process and all of those things so I really like when they do that when they put like the quote unquote popular girls voice in with the quote unquote not cool kid mm -hmm. um, because it's it's nice so that people can understand um, the, two, the two different viewpoints I read when I was in college Make I read more complex instead of just like yeah. the stock character well, and I read um, the book behind the Mean Girls movie, Queen oh. Bees and Wannabes. I read that in college. It's actually one of my favorite things. I reread it a lot when working on books, like um, because it does evaluate like the psyche of like every teenage girl in the world of every kind. But it does it shows like this is the mentality of like trying to be this kind of cool kid or this kind of other kid and this kind of this like where you're when you're trying to fit into that. This is what you have to do like to do those things and this is how your it's mind alters It's a symptom of that. a system, not mm -hmm. like, it's not like these people are really evil. Exactly. And so not all of them. It's great to see like these books where it, it goes into that mind and it's not just one or the other. So you're not just like, oh, well, that's the loser character. Or, oh, well, that's yeah. this. Like you're actually like, actually, like that's a really great person. And oh, she doesn't really want to do those things. Like, and so you start to see like the interworkings of a realistic approach to like how people's minds work and I love that so much because we don't see that enough um I think we have one more book two more, two more? no yeah. one more did we talk about we, this one maybe not um I don't think we did okay well we're gonna do both at the same time because I don't have another one about the second story too. so um given to the earth Mindy McGinnis this is actually a sequel first of all Mindy McGinnis is amazing um and you should love her if you don't already, which I'm sure you do, because why would you not? Um, but this is a a sequel, and it's this world is definitely made for people who are fans of Sarah J. Mass. Like if you're a fan of her, this is a book you're gonna love. And again, it's a fantasy. Uh, this the main character was actually born to save the kingdom by sacrificing herself to the rising sea, and um, she's supposed to be but then she got married and so she's she's supposed to be like this untouchable thing she's supposed to be like this perfect um like you know live this life like now it's supposed to be kind of like okay but now she has to choose between loyalty and love and being on a mission for vengeance and like mm. all kinds of i mean it is your your typical fantasy epic story um again if you're a fan of sarah j mass you're gonna love this because it's that same like high concept, um, fighting, like, girl who chooses her over, like, her fight and her battles over the uh, things that don't necessarily matter as much. And this is the second her. book. Yes, this is the sequel. The first one is called Given, Given to, to the, the Sea. sea. Huh. So you should definitely, um, if you haven't, pick up Given to the Sea, start with there, and then... Oh, we get it, Given to the Earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going like, really oh, I got it. That. Um, and then the last book we have is Fly by Night, which was actually, uh, Lola looks it up, and this book was originally published in uh, 2005. 2005 overseas, um, and it just came over here. Just after Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And what I love about this is, is everybody knew that books were dangerous. Read the wrong book, it was said, and the words crawled and round in your brain on black legs and drove you mad, wicked mad. And that's pretty much all I needed to know that I love this book already. Um, anytime they're like, hey, books are dangerous, don't read them, I'm like, I have to read it. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that this this one was, um, Mosca was born at a time sacred to Goodman Palpatine, he, he who kept flies, up jams, and butter turns, which is why her father insisted on naming her after the housefly. He also insisted on teaching her to read, even in a world where books are dangerous, regulated things. Eight years later, he died, leaving behind an orphan daughter with an inauspicious, inauspicious name and an all-consuming hunger for words. Trapped for years in the care of her cruel uncle and aunt, Mosca leaps at the opportunity to escape, so it comes in the form of the sneaky swindler ep eponym wow, I can't even say pony ep nope, I'm done. Comes with a, a swindler. Let's just go with that. And she travels the land with him and her pet goose, 
Mosca begins to discover complicated truths about the world she inhabits and the power of words. I don't know how to say that word 100% on it. I know, I know it means like a... Eponym? Again, done. I know it means like a, a pen name. Yes. So um, it's great. Apparently there's a lot. Like it's, This was a debut fantasy. It had a silly tone, um, but also like some horror and suspense and engaging characters. And it was just... Um, it really like got pretty much every type of reader because the whole point is the power of books and mm -hmm. what they can do for you. So this is a really, really great... I like those kind of meta narratives. Me too, and I love this cover. It's, it's really so pretty. gorgeous. Um, so lots of books out this week, lots of amazing new things. And then like I said at the very beginning, um, Emma is going to be here. Let's oh, yeah. uncover her book. Emma will be here this Saturday at 6 p.m., so come out. Oh. Um, if you guys, I told you last week, if you guys want to come dressed as zombies, like, that's cool. Just don't bite people. Um, everybody would probably love it. It would be a great, exciting adventure. Um, the blood storm thing is so cool. In the back, it looks so realistic. Like, it really, like, does a good job of making it look like it's just, like, it could be a real thing. It's like just West Texas pictures. And yeah. I love it. So, yeah, so come out, see Emma, get your book signed, listen to her talk about how zombies are awesome and how Texas is both the best and worst place to be in a zombie apocalypse. Again, I feel like the lack of people is great, but then the lack of stuff is worse. So who knows? We'll see how bad this goes. Um, but this author wrote a, a blurb for the back of this. Yes, Mindy McGinnis is actually the one who, like, did the blurb for that, which is great because she's also written a book about Texas um, and, like, a dystopian world. So... Um, thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next Thursday. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments uh, down below. And we'll be here every Thursday at 11-ish, except for last week when I was super late. But we'll be here most weeks at 11-ish talking about books. So don't miss out on that. Um, there's always something new and exciting going on at Book People, and we love sharing it with you. Thanks, guys.